I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. It is the dog days of summer. They are upon us. We got new merch coming down the pipeline. Yeah, we it's do. one of the tees here that I'm wearing. We got a couple more. Uh, we have the Ryan Lynch's Pizza Pie shirt. Yeah, you can only see this if you're watching the YouTube version, so subscribe. Looks Look at this good. bad boy. Looks pretty good. There's a little typo that we're going to fix. But who, who helped us the make samples. these again? This is Brooke that helped us. Thank Yo, you again. Yeah, Brooke, her graphic design skills. Brooke Reynolds, the legend. Brooke Reynolds. So, these are sick. They'll be on the shop. Uh, and, yeah, uh, we got one, one or two more designs, too, so uh, those will be coming up soon. Uh, probably around the one-year anniversary of us doing this this pod together, Lynch. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting the Snapchat memories I know, right? of so uh, where I was when we found out about the news. Yeah. About yeah. the split. So now, yeah, we're at the year. Mm -hmm. Just, well, we're, yeah. Well, I mean, we knew by now last year, but we hadn't announced it yet. And then we did two more weeks. And then we did a couple more weeks. Yeah. Yeah, that checks out. I think we had about a month runway between us having to take it solo. Yeah. Um, and we did a great job, so very happy about it. Absolutely. Yeah, why don't we say the week of July, the week of July 1st, we'll, we'll do a merch drop. Okay. I think that sounds pretty good. So Maybe yeah. we can drink some, like, like a, like a cocktail or something on the episode. Okay. Celebrate it's a our, our celebratory our, situation. Celebrate our little perseverance. Absolutely. It sounds good to me, Lynch. Mm. Uh, come check me out in New York City, July 18th at The Stand. I'm also going to be at the Ice House in Pasadena, August 3rd, and St. Pete... The uh, Coastal Creative, 20th and 21st of September. Going to be big time. Gucci, Gucci. And alas, here we are. Lynch, I had a very funny thing unfold with Victoria. What was <laughs> my, my Victoria? Yes. Mm, so Victoria Beckham? I know that sounds weird, but uh, allow me to so, so humor me for a second. So, and the reason why I reacted the way that I did... To what she said to me I said something first She said something back And then I said something back That I wouldn't have normally said to someone Oh But you're gonna understand now Because I didn't want it to seem I think I know what you're talking okay, about now Okay so I replied to a story of you two uh, Saying looking good And I think that I think she reposted your story I thought I was I actually thought I was replying to your story Okay But I said looking good And Victoria replies which makes sense. She's like, oh, thought of you this week during the inner thighs at Pilates, thinking that I was saying, I think you guys look good physically. What I was saying is that you had been bragging about how you bought tickets to game five of the, of the NBA finals. What's the photo? The photo was you hoping that the Celtics lost game four so that you could go to game five. Okay. So when I said looking good, I was like, I think that... Oh, I think the Dallas was up like 35 at halftime. Or Within something. the context of being able to do what we sought out to do via the caption of that photo. Exactly. So, okay. so I then replied, <laughs> so I then replied, I meant looking good because Dallas is winning by a lot, but you guys look amazing too, obviously. I normally would have never replied that way, but I did because I didn't want <laughs> her to think that I was saying that I thought she looked good, which might be just kind of weird. Uh. A weird thing for me to be saying to her. She replied politely. But if I was literally replying to Victoria's picture saying you are looking good, that would be weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what? Now that you bring this up, she also was in as equally a woven mental pretzel over this as you were. <laughs> Everything that you said ping ponged back and forth between me and her before she replied to anything. <laughs> So that that checks out. That is a wash. That is a, that is a, an innocent, clean, fun interaction between the two. Because she she also is. She was like, "Wait a minute, should I not have responded in that way, or should I have acknowledged it in right. this way?" And I was like, "Shut up. It's fine. <laughs> it's yeah, fine. It, it's fine for everybody. But it is Hush. it is just funny that that <laughs> had to go that way. Because I knew that it's it's embarrassing when you think somebody meant something." But they didn't. Yeah. So in a normal situation, if I say looking good and someone thinks I'm talking about 
them or the group, whether it, when it's both of you guys, right? I'm like, hey, you guys look good. Mm-hmm. Which is which I theoretically could say if it's both of you, which it was. And if you meant it, you could have said it. You guys look good. So her being like, oh, thanks. I need to, I realize what she thought I meant. And even though I, I have no problem with somebody thinking I'm saying they're looking good, but I don't want to sort of create <laughs> any sort of Shakespearean environment here. Yeah. Where suddenly you're not sure about my messages. Yeah. And Victoria's like, to your girl. Why is Julio sending me so many surfer emojis? <laughs> The, uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> Galarati DM slide t-shirt will also be available in our merch drop. So anyway, I'm glad we live to tell the tale there. No, that's a, that's a playful slip up. Uh, but that worked out for you, bro, with the tickets. It did. So Victoria is a diehard Celtics fan. I'm a Lakers fan, but I put it aside for her. Um, and she was very conflicted because we live in Brooklyn and she hasn't had a chance to see the Celtics play once this year. So she said it would be a huge regret if she didn't get to see them the year that they win a championship. So she was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's go to the finals and uh, let's pull trigger on that. Now, the 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 issue that, that we faced was, do we go to game two? That was the first game we'd be able to go to. Or do we take a risk and hope that there is a necessary game five and go to that one? And so Victoria was like, I don't care. I want to go. Game two, let's do it. Let's pull trigger. And I was like, let's take a little bit of a risk here. Because if you go to game one or game two of any series, NHL, NBA, baseball, uh, nothing happens, win or loss. Like, they're going to just play another game no matter what. Game five could be a clinching game. And so Boston went up 3-0. We were watching game four at the bar where this text occurred and we were rooting for Dallas to win because we decided to buy game five tickets and we really wanted the opportunity to go. So we, we were lucky that it worked out. We got to see them win a championship. Bucket list item checked off. Were they expensive? They were very expensive. So and how good were the seats? We were in the last row of the furthest section back you could possibly sit. Wow. They were very expensive. God like hooked up Victoria with uh with a uh, with a sign that she needed to get these tickets because she was in California last week for business, and she was planning on taking a flight home from San Francisco to get her into New York at 10 p.m. When she got to the gate, they made an announcement and they said, "Is anybody willing to give up their seat? Mm. We will give you twelve hundred dollars to take the red eye." Wow! And so, she, as as fate made it so, she sprinted to the gate. She accepted those terms and she got home at like 7 a.m. the next day we bought the tickets it was a sign uh, from god and basically so was that how much they were uh 600 a pop no they were it was about i think they were about 1200 dollars each wow so and the stadium was full stadium was full who the fuck what tw- there's twenty thousand people that care that much about that to spend that much money on it it blows my mind like how am i not selling 500 tickets to a comedy show. Oh. I've never sold 500 tickets before. I think the most I've sold 300 a couple of times. Like like comedy shows, like a venue on the road is like 275, 250, 300. You know what I mean? I've sold some of those out. Good for me. But the fact that the Celtics are selling 20,000 tickets to an, no offense to the Celtics, a very boring game five. This series was underwhelming. I mean, there wasn't a close game in the series. Celtics basically destroy them, except for that random game four. I just am surprised that, I mean, dude, then that means the courtside tickets must have been 10 grand. Oh, more than that. I'd say, I think uh, we looked up, I think 11 rows back. We have a friend whose dad had season tickets, and uh, I think they were, I think he sold them for like somewhere between 11 and 15. What the fuck? Each. Dude, that's that's sports. I mean, you like. You think the World Series is sold out? I do think it's sold out. I don't know necessarily if everybody ends up going to the game. You're outside. It's freezing out. Well, also, okay, World Series. And some people are so rich they can afford to just not show up. Right. Or it's like a corporate thing and they don't give them all out. Yeah. Um, but baseball, the economics are a little different too because there's more there's more seats. So the, the bad seats at a baseball game are actually much, much cheaper than bad seats at a basketball game. Agreed. But I will say the bad seats at a baseball game uh, are much worse than the bad seats at a basketball totally. or an totally. NHL arena. Game. Totally. 
Um, Besides the newer stadiums, I'm not as I'm not I'm not as into it these days as I have been in the past. It has lost its aura. What sports in the general? NBA Finals has lost its aura. I saw a TikTok recently, so I'm quoting these guys. Don't know who they are, but they talked about how in 2009, 2008, early 2000s, the 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 pregame show was uh, that they televised. It was all the starters being introduced. They had oh, a big fake huge. NBA Finals trophy. They had the Finals trophy in the floor, like as part of the the wood design. And, uh, you know, they use fire and they had low camera angles of people coming out and it was super hype Dude, and it hype. felt like an event. It felt like a true event and they did all that yesterday, but it was not televised too many advertisements. Interesting. Uh, and they, maybe they thought that the sort of pregame, whatever is better. Also, dude, by the way, the TNT team is way better than the ABC team. I think they're all, does everybody say that? Yes, I think they're they are the most beloved sports crew. I think they're also being dissolved. Really? I think they're done uh, after the conference Charles. finals. Yeah, because Amazon uh, bought the rights to, uh, wow. I think, more NBA games. And I think TNT is done. Wow. So. Changing of the guard. Yeah. Yeah, well, it feels like a, a shifting time. It feels like when we were sort of growing up and when we were in, when we began, became aware of, it seems as if it had been working the way it was working for a long period of time mm -hmm. where it's like the games are televised, blah, blah, blah. Now the, the quality of the picture had included, had improved significantly, but you know, basketball major sports had been big in our parents' lifetimes as well. Like basketball, you know, the sort of James Naismith days of basketball had, they'd already progressed past that. The 60s, you know, Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, blah, blah, blah. Laker, and then the Lakers and the Celtics rivalry. Like, do people even know that that's a rivalry anymore? Is that, like, still an active rivalry? I think they... They, they, they try The, the to, media leans on that to sell to, right? those games. Right. Uh, they haven't had, I think, they haven't faced each other since 2010 yeah. in the finals. Um, it's always going to be a primetime game just because they can sell it as this historical rivalry. Totally. The same way the Yankees and the Red Sox... There's been no riz between those two teams since 2018. <laughs> yeah. And right. before that, nothing really since uh, like. Oh, interesting. So there's the 2000s. No, it's not really a thing these days. Not really. They played each other this weekend. No it was one gave a such fuck. Such a thing when I was a kid. I mean, I yeah, I like I, I I love the the rivalry. I love the oh fuck Boston. But like, if I'm being honest with myself, that hasn't been a genuine feeling since I was a little kid. Yeah. Th there, it isn't there. It is. It isn't there. And you can't force it. And the media, they, they, they can say this is like the, the headlines to the push notifications you get on your phone, like tune into the historic rivalry, the Red right. Sox and the Yankees. Yeah, it doesn't sell me on watching the game anymore. Yeah. I'm going to watch it because I'm a Yankees fan, but it doesn't sell the casual fan on like, oh, I don't want to miss this. Right, right. So. Yeah, even just this sort of tribal kind of loyalty to me is sort of lost these days. I mean, it's like, if I don't like the guys on the team, like I'm not going to like the team yeah. just because I like the team. You know what I mean? It's like kind of a weird thing. Even, you know, I'm from Connecticut and UConn or whatever. And I just found that UConn team to be really fucking annoying. And the coach I find annoying. Really? He's just kind of an ass, dude. And I think it's sick that he turned down the Lakers job. I know that's a bummer for you potentially. But he's just such a fucking ass. He's just way, he's so like, sometimes it seems like he, he lacks a little bit of class, dude. Yeah. A little bit. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I'm glad. He, I, I'm a Lakers fan. I'm glad that he is sticking with UConn. I want to see him go for it's the badass. Three it's badass. I respect it for sure. And like, you know, he seems like he's a great coach and the kids love him and this and that. But he's just so outspoken and he can be like, it's almost the way in tennis, like when you win the Grand Slam or whatever. If you go overboard with your celebration, it can look just a little bad. Yeah, and I feel kind of that way about the UConn coach. <laughs> what did What did he do after the after they won? He I, like he goes crazy. He told the kid to like slam the ball in the court or like oh his son. I, yeah, it just I don't know, dude. It just didn't seem super polished. It reminded me of a, sort of like Anthony Edwards and. McDaniels or whatever celebration when they beat the Nuggets at the end. It was just like not that classy. Jokic said something. Yeah. The goalie's a kid. All right, fine. I'm sensing, forgive me, I'm sensing some boomer energy with like the, I need some class. <laughs> like we need class. Like, I, you, no, don't like, you don't like the, you, you don't like violence. 
I'm fine with violence. Look, <laughs> and I'm, fuck yous and 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 uh, and flexing on, it's, on it's each other. It's one thing in the heat of battle or like hot dogging before the show. I get like putting on a show is a great thing, right? But then like when all is said and done, you know, it's nice to be. I think it. it, it I personally gravitate toward it when people are class acts, mm. and I think that there's a way where you can be. And I think boxing is a great example of it. These guys talk a ton of shit. And then they be, kick the shit out of each other. And then at the end, they, they embrace really a lot of the time. They say nice stuff to each other. And it's like they appreciate the crazy thing that they just went through to make money for their families and themselves and to entertain people, right? So I think that the same thing can apply to sports. So like I can be, I might give you a foul that's a little bit too hard or I might this or that. But then when the game's over, I don't need to like rub it in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You don't need to like throw up a three when the game's over. Mm -hmm. You don't need to throw up a dunk. You don't need to like throw it off the backboard and dunk or start waving bye-bye to the crowd. Well, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. jackass behavior, dude. And to be honest, it's, it's short-sighted for these athletes as well because people love a class act. You're making more money by being a classy winner, even if you're a dog during the competition. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. And maybe it's because I'm a tennis guy and I like how these guys are, you know, a lot of the, most of the time in tennis, the pros are pretty gentlemanly with each other in, in victory and defeat a lot of the time. Uh, and I just like it. It's yeah. just, it creates a nice environment to compete in. Last thing I want to say about the, uh, the game that I was at last night. Um, oh, you haven't really talked much about it. I want to hear about the, okay. I want to hear about the atmosphere, what it was like when they won, et cetera. Yeah. So, so we're standing in our section, we're in the back and I was loving it because I was able to stand up and lean up against the wall. Um, we also were in the oh, aisle. Cool. We also were in the aisle. So I had like, like our seat was in the aisle because we're in the back. So like I was able to like extend my feet. I wasn't cramped. You had room to do one of these. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh I wish the camera would pick that whole thing up. <laughs> Yo, you like step down, you run down and high five people like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> like when someone's so hilarious, you need to run away a little bit and then come back. <laughs> One of those, bro, yo, you funny, man. Yeah. So we were doing that. Um, it was, it was a great environment. Everything was kumbaya. And the guy that was sitting next to Victoria, he was like in his early twenties. He came by himself, started schmucking it up with the kid. And, uh, I was like, where are you from? He's like, I'm from New Jersey. I said, where do you live? He's from a town right over from mine. I said, what do you do? He said that he works uh, at a golf course. My brother works at a golf course in the same town that he oh, lives wow. in. He is like a head caddy at this golf course. He actually caddied for my brother's direct boss like three days ago, like the smallest of worlds. And he drove up day of, got tickets day of to see his team win a championship. And it was like super sick That's to cool. sit next to this kid. Fast forward to the Celtics, uh, you know, the, the buzzer going off, the confetti just shooting out yeah, like cool. a broken pipe. It Have was, you ever been to a team winning the championship situation live before? No. I've never, I haven't really, I mean, I've been to like the finals of a small tennis tournament. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent for me, but it must be special. It was, it was really special. It was, it was, you know, I, I was neutral. I was pretty neutral. I was happy for Victoria and I was happy to be in the room with all these excited people. Um, and, uh, it was great, but there's always a, a few bad eggs that have to ruin the fun for everybody. And so drunken mass holes, I wouldn't even say drunken mass holes. And I don't even want to do that because I, I could, I could go down and just be like all oh, typical Boston. That wasn't my experience <laughs> at this game. Everybody I was with, uh, and there was a Mavericks fan, one Mavericks fan sitting right by us. No one messed with him. Everyone was just happy to be there, focused on their team winning, which is what you're supposed to do. And uh, I don't want to say anything about it, bad about Boston and their, the, the, the reputation of their fans, but there just was a bad group of eggs uh, sitting in our section that got a little too excited. They won. It was a blowout win. It wasn't like they won at the buzzer. You know, you weren't blacking out in that moment. And just a group of people are hugging each other in the aisles and they, they fall over and they like four guys fall into this, this, you know, just this sea of people. And it, they, they dominoed and this old woman, I saw this old woman fall and get, she got hit and she fell forward and thank God she didn't like get trampled, but like she got hit. And I saw this woman who's just like seeing her team win 
And she's just it's like violence just happens. And I know I just said I love violence. I like it on the court, not 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 from the fans and not um, old ladies. Not old ladies. Those guys are off limits, dude. And she, uh, you know, I, I just it just ruined it. It just ruined it. Now she's nervous about like her safety. And I'm seeing all this, and this guy. How old are we talking? This woman was some, somewhere, I'd say mid 70s, maybe early 80s. She was old. Okay. And luckily, she just kind of got a ricochet. But somebody got landed on by four guys. They got, he got smushed. And, uh, you know, they, they get up, they run back up. And this one guy I think he was with turned around and was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And the confetti is going off during this. And so Victoria, I, I told her not, I told her just enjoy, enjoy. Let me monitor this. You enjoy, you enjoy. Let me monitor this. And the guy that was sitting next to us was part of those four people that fell. And instead of trying to help this person up, this guy, along with the other three, they run back up the stairs. And the guy that was sitting next to us that I like really, you know, yucked it up with he was hiding behind like four other people and he looked at me and he's like yo we just fell on those people <laughs> and i just turned and i like i didn't acknowledge it and uh i was like i don't fuck with that i didn't mm. fuck with that and just left a sour taste in my mouth and not now I, i'm not going to tell my brother about like the connection mm. and it just i just i just hated that mm -hmm. it didn't spoil the night for me but it ruined the night for uh the, the two people that, uh, like, got landed on. I mean, you don't know that for sure. The guy, uh, the, the guy speaking on behalf of the person that got squashed turned around and was not facing, this like, the court at all and was just screaming, trying to find who did it and was just looking for, like, someone to say they're sorry. That's all you want. He's like, guys, we're, we're here at the fucking championship. Like, the confetti's going off. Like, what the fuck? Why are we doing this? And somebody was, like, crouching in. They're like, yo, we just want a championship, man. Like, what do you expect? Mm. Expect a little bit more than that, you know? Mm. So that was it. Um, mm. Not that was it. Everything was fantastic. That's just something of note. Um, mm -hmm. It sucks when you like you like build like rapport with somebody and they're just a scumbag. And then they just ruin it. And he wasn't like, oh fuck, I did that. Like he was like proud. He had like this like venom in his voice. I just did not fuck with that. Have some respect, people. I'm sorry that we keep talking about sports this whole episode. But who thought of the idea? of the jumbotron and like was it always an idea but it just wasn't always possible a i wonder how long they've had it b before then did they just sell less tickets in a smaller stadium because who like if they're like well if we build a stadium that big people won't be able to see it and then a guy's like well guess what they don't need to see it mm -hmm. they're not coming to see it they're coming for the to, for the atmosphere and then we show it on a giant screen so they can see it and the fact that that is is true because on paper it doesn't make sense that you'd want to go to a game if you can't see it you want to go to the game yeah let's go you won't be able to see it oh <laughs> you think that would be some sort of deal breaker but apparently it's not mm. people love to just go because it's fun can you did you see my phone no can you guess where the first jumbotron was in all four sports like what city or what uh what it's guess mm. 1980 Baseball team. Oh wow, interesting. I had to narrow it down. Um, We'd be here forever. Not that that you you, you would have figured. Yeah. Okay. No, never, never mind. Well, no, it makes 1980 sense. 1980 Dodgers had the the first jumbotron uh, in all four major sports. Interesting. The jumbotron at baseball stadiums is always facing the batter. Yeah. So if you're it's the outfield, and right? the cheapest seats are typically in the outfield, right. sitting next to and aligned with the jumbotron. So you were at a disadvantage at a baseball stadium when it comes to jumbotrons. Yeah. But at a basketball game or a hockey game, jumbotron good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, I mean, bro, if you're in the back, like, you need it. Or even at a concert in a place like that, like, you can't see the guy. Yeah. Dude, we were at the Drake concert at MSG. They had the jumbotron. We were so far back that they had TVs that were, like, because the jumbotron was so far away. That's crazy. And the, jump, uh, the TVs weren't working. So that concert sucked. I Crazy. hated that. I did not like that concert. You did not. I did not. You did not. I did not. <laughs> um, you did not. I did not. Uh, one more thing of note uh, from the game. As a neutral fan, I showed up wearing a white t-shirt, a pair of jeans, and a hat. And it wasn't a Celtics hat. It was just for my college. I respect that. And I was excited because they give out free t-shirts for the playoffs and the finals. I'm wearing it right now. Sick. 
Now, let me be a brat for a moment. I was super excited about the t-shirts that uh, we most likely were going to be getting because the ones that I saw from the first round, the second round, and the conference finals were sick. It was the the Boston Celtic Lucky logo guy. I think his name's Lu- his name is Lucky, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mascot, the, the the leprechaun, the leprechaun. It was it was a sick picture of Lucky. Simple, simple design. Something Brooke could have done. She would have killed it. Um, her name is Brooke, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and it just it had the Celtic on it, and it said in cool letters, it said like Game Two of the semifinals, Game Five of the Eastern Conference Finals. This is the one that we get. It says, whatever it takes. And it has the tiny little alternative Celtics logo on it. And it says finals 2024. It does not say game five of the finals 2024. So if I'm at the gym working out in this t-shirt and somebody sees me wearing this, they might think that I didn't go to game five. Oh, that's interesting. And the first thing I said to Victoria when we got to our seats, I was like, babe, these t-shirts suck. And she was like, shut up. Because was, this was like her bucket list item. I was like, these t-shirts suck. So I was pretty pissed off about the t-shirts. There's a chance that you guys got these because you were in the worst seats. No, everyone, everyone had them. <laughs> everyone, everyone had, had them. Exact one. I would have went down and tried to, tried to steal, steal something. One. Yeah. It was a great time. So I'll, uh, that's it's a good tea still, dude. It's all right. Thank it's you. A, it's a good tea. But core memory, great time. Congrats to, uh, congrats to the Celtics. Um, and yeah, we left before uh, they handed out the MVP trophy and everything. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had no, it, it was, you know, it was, it was, Jalen it was Brown. madness outside. I'm it was sure. madness outside. Were people like parading around? People were parading around. Glass was being thrown. You just, that was part of the soundtrack of our walk home was broken glass and cars honking. Why do people destroy things when they celebrate? I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. And that's why I don't know if I want to be at Yankee Stadium, knock on wood. Well, whenever the Yankees I mean, win their next World Series, right now, right? yeah, they're playing very well. I, I have very high hopes this year, but you see, you see what people do after a championship, and it just makes you want to stay at home. And my girl Victoria is very short, and she's you know, rightfully so. She has a fear of large crowds, so like I walked out of there ready to you know take one for her. Uh, <laughs> luckily, we got out of there uh, nimbly and swiftly enough to avoid. Uh, any issues, but you know, it, that t- whenever the parade is, that's going to be a crazy day. Mm. Yeah. But this is reminding me of something. So I was talking to a friend's girlfriend this weekend and she was saying that one time they were sitting in seats and they got in a fight with these guys because it was these guys seats. And, and they, sh- they're like, these are our seats. And she's like, okay, well those are our seats and there's people sitting in them. Blah, 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 right? And then I guess she got into a big fight with these two, with these guys. She's wrong. They aren't your seats. But she said that the guy that she was with wasn't sticking up for her. And she's like, that's how I knew our days were numbered. I was like, damn. I know. Yeah, you know what? Good for him. <laughs> well, do you think that he knew she was just wrong or he was being a pussy? That's true. If he's on bad info, then yeah, that is... Then, if, you know... If, if he were to believe that those were his seats, yeah, that is pussy behavior. Sometimes you got to take the L in the short term to get the W long term. Yeah. Meaning, if some dude showed up and started causing trouble and you needed to step up to him, even if he was bigger than you, and this dude was going to kick your ass, sometimes you got to get rocked in the face for the in the honor uh, in the honor of your woman. You know, yeah. It is sometimes you got to put be willing to put yourself on the line. Yeah, when we were at the Drake concert, there were these, uh, I think I shared this, there were these three girls that were squishing together over over two seats, and so one of the girls was encroaching on our seat, and I had to say something because Victoria was getting pushed, <laughs> and uh, I did say something, and I also lost because they like didn't listen to me, and I said <laughs> something again, so... Um, excuse me. <laughs> so I said something, which is trying to stick up for my girl... I did that. Guys, um, one, two, guys. three. These are our seats. Sorry. And uh, it was uh, it was a bad time. I lost uh, both situations in that. I hate so. to say it, dude. But yeah, that, that I mean, bad info, fighting on the seats like that, that sucks. <laughs> um, listen, man, you fight the battles, do your best, and that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Well, before we, we bring it home here, let's do this email. We intended to do this email when we had Sienna on, but we forgot. Might have been helpful to get a, a lady's take to help us. I can role play. All right. So anyway, this email is titled, Need Some Wisdom. Uh, so here we go. Hey, fellas. Back with a question this time and no weird dreams about staff softball games. <laughs> my girlfriend is traveling right now, and when she gets back, she's going to come stay over at my parents' place with me. We just graduated from college. Uh, you both are, you boys are both very well versed in romance. Thank you very much. Thank you. How can I play the ultimate first night back to make it really special? Okay, so I, there's a pretty. I, I have a good answer to this. Is that that was it? That's the whole question. Okay, but I think it's good. And uh, so since she's you, you live at home still. You just finished college. That's normal. I think what you can do to make it really special is get a hotel mm-hmm. for one night. And then you stay with your parents for the rest of the time. Um, because it, it, I think the thing that will make it the most special is independence. Even if your parents are chill, even if whatever, I mean, I don't know if she's been there before or not or whatever, but like, I don't, and I also don't know where you live. So if you can give us more deep info there, maybe there'll be more that we can say. I'll look at it. Yeah. But in, as a general thought, um, if you can get a hotel room for you guys, I think that'll make it really special. Mm. And you don't even have to necessarily do anything. Like I think that if money is a consideration and it, by doing the hotel, maybe it means that dinner won't be possible or whatever. I, I, I actually still don't think it matters. Like even if you were to have dinner with your parents or whatever, I think that like having that place to yourselves with no parents around, I think that'll be really, really special as you guys have just, just entered a adulthood. So, so Lynch, I'm adding one more thing. He he had a follow up email. He said some some other maybe relevant info is that she's been gone for like two months. So mm. Doesn't change my answer, but that's what that I further think. instills why like that's why that's the best move. I think. Yeah, I agree with you. The only thing is, some people need parents' permission when they're living at home to do certain things. <sighs> All right, really? I think so. Even yeah. As adults. Yeah. Jesus my parents, Christ. you know, while I was in college, we my parents established some some rules. Like after when I became independent, completely different. But if you're living at home, you have to consider that your parents might pull like the pull the the you're living at home card on you and you have to be home. You can't go to a hotel. I think that that's a real thing. Really? Yeah. I have well, I have Jesus a couple. Christ. I know a couple people that have. Uh, so they weren't allowed like to have that. a hotel. Like they were like, if she's visiting, you guys are staying here. But and damn. you're not going to a hotel. And this assumes that this person has no financial independence, so therefore they can't say anything about it. They live at home, yeah. It's a real thing. If like I, I feel like we should at least give him a do the hotel if you can. Parents are chill. Do the hotel if you can afford it. But we should also give him maybe like another option for like how to have a romantic time. Yeah, at his parents' move place. out of your parents' house, dude. <laughs> If you, <laughs> if you if you're not allowed to take your girlfriend to a hotel, get the fuck out of there immediately. That is brutal. Who I feel so bad for your friends, Lynch. Whoever you're talking about here, uh, yeah, that's wild. Getting Help. treated like you're nine years old. Uh, get out of there immediately. I I know a couple people that I mean it's it's their fault. Um, but they, they still have that kind of relationship with their parents. Jesus. Let me know. Let us let us know if 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 my thoughts here are like crazy and like unrealistic. That that just from my experience, that's that's like been a big rule. You're living in my house, like you can't go do that. But but okay, I understand you're living in my house, you can't throw a party. You're living in my house, you need to get a job. You're living in my house, you need to pay some rent. You're living in my house, whatever. But you're living in my house. You can't leave my house to do stuff. I've never heard of that. Mm. And I'm sure it exists. You wouldn't You wouldn't have just said it. But anybody who's going through that, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. There's just some moms and dads that feel some type of way. And I, I think um, some people are trapped uh, to the, the guilt that their parents will, will throw onto them. What's the and I'm reasoning? not speaking on behalf of mine. Uh, the reasoning? Yeah. Like, is it because the parents would have to pay for the hotel? No, I think it's just like uh, it's it's like a it's a sign of disrespect. Like we have a home, you don't want to be here, and it's just one of those things that some parents they don't they can't filter that through and be like, oh, they want to have a night to themselves. They're going to go do a, a fun thing together. It's uh, you're in the neighborhood, you're staying here. 
Okay, well that so it's one the same thing, way maybe if if you're visiting, I yeah. understand your parents putting up a a fight. If you're like, we're gonna come stay, we're gonna come visit, but we're gonna stay in a hotel. Like, what do you mean? This house isn't good enough for you. You're not comfortable here. I totally get that. I don't get, hey, mom and dad, my girlfriend's coming back. Uh, I think I'm thinking about staying at a hotel one night with her and the parents being like, no. Who are these fucking animal monster parents? You know, I mean, again, I'm sure it exists. They're in the suburbs. <laughs> they are really... Not doing the right thing. Whoever yeah. His parents well, hope, hopefully you can do the hotel thing. Okay. So let's Just, say there's it, a scenario where he can't. Or your parents. What will we say to him? Yeah. I mean, dude, I don't know, man. Like she's been gone for two months, living her life, like seeing adulthood. And now she's coming home to a man boy <laughs> who can't, who has no independence and can't do anything. I mean, like if you find yourself in that situation, yeah, I would say my best advice is move out before your girlfriend comes home. <laughs> If you're not allowed to take her out, He's let's say, thing. let's say that, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to move out. Your parents have chained you to the radiator and you cannot <laughs> leave the house. You've never left the house since you've moved out. Of, since you've gotten out of college, you have never, you haven't left the house once you're on house arrest. Uh, and you cannot leave and you have to make it special for her somehow. What, what should you do? Okay. Uh, you guys should make dinner together. While mom and dad watch, yeah. Well, mom and dad would be would. So yeah, I guess. Well, no, you're chained. You're chained to the gutter in the basement. Well, okay. Let's say he's let off the chain when she's home, and there's some way. I mean, will they be allowed to sleep in the same room? Do the same parents who don't let you go out also <laughs> not let you sleep in the same room with your girlfriend? I think so. So they'd have to sleep in separate rooms. Yeah. Jesus. Uh. Man. Yeah. I guess like. In this scenario, can they can maybe go to dinner, right? Yeah, go to dinner. Go do anything you possibly can to I, get away from your parents yeah. while you're with your girlfriend. Because now you've transitioned into adulthood. It's really important to sort of make that transition gracefully. I'd say that the, uh, some of the most difficult moments to survive as a couple are those transitions. High school to college, college to adulthood. Mm -hmm. You just change. The nature of your and rhythm of your life changes so drastically that it can be hard to sort of continue to have things in common with people. So something to think about. Yeah. Go, go leave the house. If this is her first time visiting your area, it sounds like she's not close. Go show her, just show her around, show her where you grew up and uh, yeah. take her out to dinner and you'll have plenty of time to hold hands, drink some wine and look into each other's eyes and, you know, just appreciate being together after not for two months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll have that alone time before you, you must go home and sleep in separate beds. When Victoria visited me, we would go out to dinner and we were there, we'd be there for a couple hours and it was great. Um, I feel like you could do the same thing. So, so she visited you when, when you like just finished college during college in the summers and the winters. Right, right, right. Yeah. I hesitated, but my parents weren't like, the other parents. I hesitated as if I was trying to protect my parents. I know. I, I, I thought that to the basement, and I want, and I'm not going to cut it. I'll let you know. That's not how it was. But you're in college. It's different. Yeah. If you're but. in college, you're still like you get a little bit more. Uh, like most parents give you a little bit more slack, but when you're home, you're home, and the rules kind of still apply. Uh, and if you're not allowed to sleep in the same bed at home, then you definitely can't get a hotel. Yeah. Um, and that rule is a little more enforceable when you're in college than when you're an adult. Exactly. I didn't, I didn't go home after, after college. No, so I didn't, I didn't have that. So good yeah. shit. Good luck with that. Uh, let us know how it goes. And if you have any further sort of stuff to share with us about it, we're happy to discuss it more. Uh, my, I, my thoughts go out to anybody who has no independence and is living at home. <laughs> you need to manifest a more independent situation for yourself. Uh, be patient and, uh, Vigilant and you'll get there. Get on LinkedIn or Indeed or ZipRecruiter yeah. now. You'll get a job. Uh, oopspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, follow us at oopspodcast and all the socials. I'm at not Julio on Instagram, not Julio G on TikTok and Snapchat. Uh, come see a show. Uh, check out my my tour dates. They're in the link. The link is in all of my bios and everything. Uh, but I got tickets coming up. You can go to notjulio.com or you can click the link in my bio. Lynch, what about you? Yeah, Ryan is really polite. Email us, oops, the podcast at gmail.com, and I'll see, we'll see you guys later. See you on Thursday.